What's up everybody? So I get a lot of questions on the channel about, hey, what bulbs do you use? Or, hey, where'd you get that dig box for thunder? And I actually got a video request from a guy named Ronty Racer. This is for you, man. He asked me to show off everything that I have in Thunder's enclosure, especially the new stuff that I've added ever since I've upgraded his enclosure and done some modifications. So guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is gonna be a tour of Thunder's current enclosure. Guys, let's start the tour while we feed this little lunatic. Ready, Thunder? He literally saw me walk in with the bag of roaches and he hasn't eaten in two days. So, expect this guy to have a very good feeding response today. All right, Thunder, you ready to eat? All right, let's see how this looks when I bring this down. See, look at that, he's going nuts. Okay, but we're not here just for, just for feeding, guys. We're here for the tour of Thunder's enclosure. So I'm basically going to go over everything that we have here for this guy all right guys so to start off with we have the muscle rack five gallon heavy duty storage tote now the reason i chose this storage tote is because i wanted a plastic bin that i could put on the warm side of the enclosure that wouldn't melt i didn't want to just put any old thing over here where next thing you know it's like lopsided my animal has burns causing a fire in the house. I was just too scared. So honestly, when I was looking for this tote, all I did was really just Google around some stuff. I threw it in the Ecumider fans page on Facebook and just basically asked around, hey guys, has anyone ever used these before? Are these good, this, that, and the third? A couple people did make one or two better recommendations that I literally just couldn't find at the time. This one's been working just fine. Uh, as you can see, since I've put it in here, it's not warped or anything. Since this is the warm side, I was worried about this thing like being melting or being extremely hot to the touch all the time. And that's just not the case. Hey, Thunder. Thunder's like, stop talking, you jerk, and give me some food. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So basically, I put this in here to make sure this guy had a nice humid box. Because the thing is, even though I spray down the entire enclosure, Whenever, uh, whenever I get ready to add moisture to to the uh, to the substrate, this little guy's still searching for food. Do you guys see this? He's insatiable. Okay, but I gave you one roach already. You can have more in a minute. <laughs> but yeah, guys. So I basically did that just to make sure he always had humidity. You know, sometimes you might be gone for the weekend. Sometimes you might forget to miss. Sometimes he might just have a stubborn shed and he just wants to go into a very, very humid place where he can just sit in there and just soak up a lot of moisture. And that's what this adds. It also adds another hiding space for him and more security. This tote gives this guy the ability to completely bury his body, which he can't necessarily do now that he's over a year old, in the rest of the enclosure. Like I said before, bigger enclosures coming soon, as soon as I move and get some more room but for now this actually gives him plenty of space now this thing is nine inches high i'd be happier if it was 12 inches high just so he could bury himself a whole foot into the uh into the substrate yes buddy i see you you will get food <laughs> but at least for now it's a good substitute so since i have a four by two by two and not a four by three by two this little item right here will do me pretty well at the moment all right, the second item. So this item is actually asked about quite a lot. Yes, buddy, I'll give you food. Okay, guys, let me give this guy a roach so that way uh, he doesn't like leap out of the enclosure or something because he definitely doesn't worry about heights when it comes time to feed. So let's see, you want this? I'm just gonna drop it right here. Go get it. Good boy, knock that thing down. All right, so while Thunder is uh, savaging that little insect, I'm gonna tell you guys about the floodlight I have right here. Now, here's the package that I have right here. You guys are lucky because I was actually getting ready to throw this out earlier because I need to order some more. Um, but 
These are actually the Philips 90 watt replacement bulbs. It actually uses 72 watts, even though it's a 90 watt. And I keep mine about 11 inches away from the basking spot. So what I like about these is they last, for me, they last a few months at a time, which is good for a flood bulb, even though they are cheaper, you do gotta buy them more frequently, at least in, uh, in my experience, you have to buy these more frequently than a regular reptile bulb that might last you about six months, depending on the quality. But yeah, these tend to last me about two, three months at a time. I usually buy them in bulk, at least two in a pack, sometimes four in a pack, just to make sure that I have extra because you never know, you might wake up one day where, since my lights are on a timer, oh, UVB is on, but the heat's not on. And then my Aki monitor's sitting under here in the morning looking sad like, Oh, where's the heat? So then what I have to do is replace this bulb. So I always try to keep some extras around as a replacement for whenever this guy needs them. But yeah, you can find these online. You can find them in almost any home improvement store. These are a great item to have for your Acumine. Now granted, I know people are trying to hit specific temperatures and guys, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. If you wanna hit my temperatures and you wanna use the same distance and the same bulb, that's not guaranteed. Why? Because there's different environmental factors in there. Your enclosure might be a little different. The surface of your basking spot might be different than mine, so it might not hold the same temperature. The temperature in your house is also a big factor when it comes to heat and humidity in enclosure. But since we're talking about heat, think about it. For example, I blast my AC during the summertime, but what that means is I gotta make sure that my Aki has adequate heat. Now, if you live in a house where, let's say, just if one side just happens to be warm than the other because um, the sun is hitting a certain part of your house, whatever the reason is, your house may be warmer during the summertime than mine, or you might crank up the heat really, really high during the winter time. And to make a long story short, guys, what I'm trying to say is this. If this basketball is exceeding 160 degrees at the surface temperature of the basking spot, you can always just use a lower wattage. Now, this is a PAR 38 uh, indoor outdoor floodlight. And the reason I like to use this particular one so much is because, buddy, you can't go in the box or eat the box. What is wrong with you? Okay, you've already had two roaches. It's okay, bud. It's, buddy, yes, yes, I, I know you're hungry, okay? Just give me a sec. I'm trying to show the people how to, well, I'm trying to show the people what I use to keep you nice and warm, so that way <laughs> their Aki's can be nice and healthy too, all right, bud? Okay, wait, wait a minute. All right, let me throw him another roach. <laughs> this guy's crazy. He's like, you can't fool me. I smell roaches over there. You better give me that food, little crazy monkey. There you go. You want this? You want this? You want this? You want this? He's a little crazy. I hope he doesn't get my finger. Good boy. Good control. Good boy. Very, very good. So if you want to use the same brand as me, fine, but you don't necessarily have to use the 90 watt. You can go with a lower wattage if you want to. If the temperature inside your house is warmer than mine, to make sure you're not overheating your reptile. So if it exceeds over 160 degrees, I would take it down a notch because I wouldn't go much higher than that. And this 100 degree and 60 degrees Fahrenheit I'm talking about to make sure you don't overheat your reptile. These guys like it hot but everything has a limit and we don't want it to be too hot. I'm just like, yeah, enough about heat. Let's talk about food. Let's talk about substrate. And I'm gonna throw this roach into the substrate. Hey buddy, you want this roach? You want it, you want it? It's in the substrate, go get it. It's right there. Yes. Okay, so the substrate I'm using right now is a mixture of Scott's Premium Topsoil. Uh, a link will be in the description at the bottom. And I'm using PlaySand. I don't remember the brand off of the top of my head, but I will link the PlaySand uh, in the description. And I'm using a wash PlaySand. The reason why is because it's less dusty and I just want the least amount of dust as possible when I'm making a sandy soil for my Acumonitor. Now, the Scott's Premium Topsoil. Now, this is just a organic topsoil that doesn't have any pesticides, any fertilizers, anything in here that could harm your reptile. As I said before in my substrate video, the topsoil can sometimes have some stuff in it that you don't really want in your animal's enclosure. Pieces of wood, pieces of plastic, sometimes you'll get a couple stones or two. 
So always as a recommendation guys, whenever you're using topsoil, just make sure that you screen it properly for any junk that you don't want your reptile to be exposed to. Me personally, when I make my mixture, it's time consuming, but I take a little bit of soil and sand at a time and I mix it together and I run my fingers through it real finely and I pick out any junk that I may run across. It might seem easier to just dump the whole bag in of soil or dump the whole bag in of sand and just mix it all up together. I understand people are busy and, and you might not have a whole lot of time, but just to be on the safe side, it's much better off for your reptile to make sure that you screen it properly first, just to make sure your little buddies are nice and safe in the enclosure with whatever substrate you are providing. This last item isn't really a modification, but it is something that I am constantly using. So what I have up top is a 12% D3 Plus Arcadia UVB bulb. This bulb is really good for Ackies because it's very good for desert species and it's really good at giving them the ultraviolet light that these reptiles need in order to produce vitamin D3 on their own and absorb the calcium from their food so that way they don't get metabolic bone disease. Now, the thing is guys, there is a little bit of controversy with this where some people believe that monitors don't need UVB, some people believe Ackies uh, don't need UVB at all. I guess they're using a vitamin D3 supplement so that way their reptiles can still get the benefit of vitamin D3 to help absorb the calcium. Guys, in my personal opinion and from the breeders that I've spoken to and just from general knowledge of a biological background because I, I am a biologist by trade. Uh, I usually don't try to flaunt that or say that a whole lot, but I do understand metabolic processes. To me, any animal that is diurnal, that is coming out during the middle of the day and is basking, requires UVB. Especially an animal like this that is coming from Australia that has a much higher UV index than even the southern parts of the United States. So. Just to be on the safe side, guys, even if you disagree with me, hey, just like just like some of my other reptile friends say, it's okay to disagree. We can still, you know, get along and things like that. But listen, my recommendation is just use UVB and be on the safe side. And if you're going to use one, use a good quality one and make sure you replace it whenever recommended. If you want to, you can get a solar meter and actually test out to see how the UV output is going over time to see when your bulb is going out or to see if it's defective. But the main rule of thumb on UVB bulbs is to replace them every six months to a year depending on the brand and depending on the recommendation. So as you guys can see, I have two purchases for Thunder that I actually had in the enclosure from the very beginning. I actually had one and then I added the other one later on just because he got too big for a smaller one that I had and then he wanted more space. So I figured I'd just add two to add a little bit more vertical space just to give this guy a little bit more enrichment and to help him out with his thermal regulation. Now these are mag natural rock ledges. And the interesting thing about these that I noticed after getting them is when they first come in, you might think that they're too bright. They're kind of just white and bright orange and you're like, uh, these don't really look as natural as I thought. I don't really know. But I noticed as the weeks go by, they turn this yellowish color in the areas where it's whitish. And that's where you'll see these rock ledges look more like a real natural rock ledge. Well, these guys won't look more like a fancy cheese or something like that. They're gonna look more like an actual stone, something that would naturally occur in nature. And that's about it for today's video, guys. So I have one more roach here for Thunder, so I'm gonna let him get eat this thing right here. Come on, bud. Hey, roach, you know what? I'm gonna get that thing. You see he's getting lazy, his belly's getting full. Where? Thunder, where, where'd you, oh, there he is. <laughs> yep, so, Thunder's happy. He's getting a nice meal right now. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour, this little recap of everything I used in my Aki monitors in Closure Remodel. I'm gonna leave a link to everything that I used here in the description at the bottom. If you have any other questions, guys, please remember to hit me up on my Instagram. I've been getting a lot of questions lately. I'm loving the feedback I'm getting from all the other subscribers from YouTube. And it's much easier to send pictures and send links to you guys, help you guys out. And guys, not even 
to not even look at me as like a source of knowledge or anything like that because I'm not an expert. I'm just a keeper who's learning along my way, but also just from the hobbyist point of owning reptiles. I love talking to other people and learning about new reptiles that I may never even heard of before. So it'd be good just to have a good conversation with people about herb culture, about all the different species that are out there. And it doesn't have to be Ackies. It doesn't have to be lizards. It doesn't have to be reptiles, guys. I met a really awesome guy named Rob who talked to me a lot about his uh, poison dart frogs, which I actually do want as a display pet later on uh, down the road. So yeah, guys, I'm learning a lot from you guys. And it's awesome to get a chance to interact with people who are into the same hobbies and share similar interests. So yet again, guys, don't forget to follow the Instagram that scales underscore 13. Please remember to like and subscribe if you like this video. Thunder's full and he's looking like he's uh, got the lizarditis and he's getting ready to take a nap. And I'm going to go grab some food myself. All right, guys. Peace.